Dan Gertler is a 38-year-old Israeli billionaire uh, who's one of the biggest investors here in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Dan Gertler first came here in 1997 at the height of a war that killed millions and millions of people. And he came to invest in diamonds. And since then, he's ex expanded his business empire to include copper and cobalt. Congo is one of the richest countries in the world in terms of natural resources. And Dan Gertler is the biggest player here. He has his, his fingers in almost every single piece of the pie in Congo. Dan Gertler basically started off as a diamond trader. He's the grandson of the founder of Israel's Diamond Exchange. He comes from a very wealthy family. He flew around the world trading rough diamonds and quickly made a fortune. He claims that by the age of 23, he had a turnover of $2 billion a year. He invested that money mainly in Congo and by buying up different mines and by either develop, developing them himself or selling them on to other partners. And usually it's been the latter. The allegation has been that other companies are paying to develop mines that he owns. So he's kind of getting a free ride. Uh, this is something he denies. Dan Gertler is incredibly private. Uh, you never see him out in Congo or, or in Tel Aviv. He spends a lot of time with his family. He's very religious. He loves business. He gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning to study the Bible, and then it's business, business all day. He's always flying back and forth between Congo and Tel Aviv. Uh, he doesn't have hobbies. He is constantly checking his Blackberry. He's constantly involved in, in you know, wheeling and dealing. In Israel, he's He's very big into charity. He supports a lot of organizations, hospitals, orphanages, a lot of religious institutions. He, he prays three times a day. He's strictly kosher. He spends five days in the Congo uh, every week, and then he makes sure to be back uh, Friday afternoon um, for the Sabbath. He's a personal friend of President Joseph Kabila. The controversy surrounding him is whether this friendship to President Kabila has resulted in him getting sweetheart deals from the government. Um, and he now is in major, major partnerships with uh, global giants like Glencore, um, like Eurasian Natural Resources Corp, you know, big FTSE 100 listed companies. He rejects all allegations regarding corruption. He says that he's taken huge risk in a country that's very unpredictable. A lot of companies won't even come to Congo because they don't know what's going to happen, whether their title is secure. His comeback is, well, show me, the, show me the proof. Show me the proof that I have actually ever engaged in corruption. And, you know, there is no black on white evidence to show that he has bribed anyone. There's a group called uh, Global Witness um, that focuses on, on Africa and uh, you know, kind of the vulture capitalism where people from outside um, uh, make a lot of money out of the mineral wealth and don't give uh, back um, to the country. The Congo is one of the poorest countries in the world. People work in these mines for, for pittance and he's making billions. Um, so that is the, the rap against him. The bottom line, he says, if somebody doesn't want to do business with me, that's fine. I can find other partners.